Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Relevant. This is Do All The Things. And on today's episode, I've got my S-Series, my Ibanez S470. Old school, just S470. No DX, RX, FX, 6X, 7X, um, just an S470. And it's a bit of a patch job. You might look at it and you might need see some non-matching hardware. Well, it, this guitar has a bit of a story. But today what I want to do is, you know, it's kind of missing a pickup right here, bud. So I'm going to be doing a little uh, mix and matchy here and I'm going to be chucking in this EMG single coil without changing pots. Let's see if I can pull it off. Stick around and find out. Okay, now this is stuck in there like a pick in your acoustic. That's okay. Oh, no, there it goes. So a little bit of history on this guitar. I bought it on eBay for 250 bucks. Seemed like a good idea at the time, but when I got it, I found it was completely chowdered up. The original pickup rings were rotten. The bridge was kind of screwed up. Like one of these pins was replaced by a random screw and stuff like that. It needed a new nut, as is common on worn out Floyd Rose guitars because people have the bright idea of running them unlocked. So you can do that. Drop tuning, up tuning, drop tuning, up tuning, not realizing that that wears out the nut and Floyd's do not like to be run unlocked. So replace the nut, got it fret work, which is still holding to this day. And then at some point I replaced the bridge outright. That's actually a direct from China eBay special. And you gotta be careful. It, it works, it works, but it's not as smooth and refined as a, a more name brand part. And you can tell the metal on it is much softer. Like you gotta, you gotta be careful not to over torque these guys or else it just, it starts to screw up where it bites onto the string. But you know, after putting all that work into it, Damn, this thing's a player. You know, a good healthy setup Ibanez is just a great playing guitar. I don't care what people say about Gibsons and Fenders and PRSs and LTDs. Ibanez is freaking play. Problem is they sound like garbage. They don't exactly put good pickups in them. You know, that's what you're getting when you pay more for the big boy brands. And Basswood? <laughs> Freaking hate basswood, but it's their biggest weakness. This guy was actually said to be made out of mahogany and it's a thin mahogany. It feels good, it sounds good. But you know, rumor has it, it's not real mahogany. It's some sort of, you know, knockoff mahogany, but still it sounds good, trust me. Loaded into it, I have your Seymour Duncan JB and your Seymour Duncan 59, classic situation. I actually got them because I traded for an EMG set that I had to, you know, one of the hardcore screamo kids back in the day. They just, you know, they all just wanted EMGs. Bought himself a brand new Schecter, I think it was. Came with these, traded, hey, Cool, yeah, they work really well. And in retrospect, the JB might be a touch saturated for my taste these days. I'd, I'd like if it had a bit more hollowness, a little less output, which is funny because I, I am a high gain player. But I digress. What do we want to do? Well, this guy is missing. It's missing something that I can use for cleaner tones. See, the 59 often comes with, you can see it right in there. That's just, you know, the braided conductor. There is no coil tapping on this and I don't want to take it apart and modify it. So I can't get my parallel. I can't get my coil tap sounds. It's Pretty much what you see is what you get. I also like the simplicity of three-way switching, which works well on this guitar. So, you know, this guy, this guy, and right now, because I have it wired for a single, that doesn't do anything. I actually had a Duncan quarter pound in there before and it sounded awesome until I needed it for another project. But I recently retooled my XL and I salvaged this EMG. Now I know I, I like to poo poo on EMGs. I just don't like their crunch tone in the bridge, but I like them great for neck positions and even clean tones or what I would want a single coil for. I find a normal single coil is just a touch tame for me. I kind of wish for a little bit more, a little bit more sensitive output. And the EMG single coil is gonna to do that for me. So the biggest problem is getting it wired in there, right? So the horse and pony show we're up against, we got 500K pots, you need 25s, but I have a hack that I believe is gonna fix that situation for me. So I'm not too worried about that. The biggest problem is getting a battery in there. Um, it might not look like it, but it's not really fitting all that well. Oh, maybe like that. If it doesn't push on these contacts here, what I want to try to do is install an alternative jack first and see if I can get that battery better fitted because this is a semi-proprietary jack. I want to see what other options I can explore here. Oh, geez, that wasn't installed very nice to begin with. Oh, what size ranch trigger is going to loosen on this popper? Oh, first try, 14 mil. Oh, goodbye. 
Oof, you know what? That hole is deeper and longer than I expected. No, I don't think I'm going to be able to fit the jack that I thought I was going to be able to fit in here. <laughs> I was figuring I might be able to position-wise fit one of these guys in there, right? You just common amp jack, and then if that situated there nice, it would be slightly more compatible with a battery, but maybe not. But based on what I'm seeing, this hole is like a half inch thick. So yeah, it hasn't got a chance. So screw that plan. I guess we'll clean up that jack and get it back installed. Oh, now that I've pulled it out, which um, orientation is which? Okay, I can tell that one's clearly ground. Tiny, tiny little house. Okay, I'm gonna have to test on this now. <laughs> All right, bud, who's put the T in TRS here? Is it you? Is it you? It's the long one that's not connected to the chassis. So I guess, and this is the R. It is currently grounded, yes. Which means it will work for EMG switching. Yes, it will. Okay, so non-standard jack, but at least we can use it for EMG switching. Assuming we can get a battery crammed in there. Wouldn't it be nice? There's lots of room now. It looks like it'll go here, but it doesn't because of the various curves that this guitar has. All right, I got the jack soldered back nice in there. Actually, the slight change in positioning means that it, the battery fits just a little bit better. I don't like the fitment of the battery, but I think we're gonna be able to make it work. So let's go ahead and get the cable in there. Oh, oh great, we're probably gonna have to go underneath the bridge pickup to route it. All right, all in one shot then. In fact, I gotta find the screws for this guy. Oh boy. All right, as is the good old familiar trick that I use to change pickups on a Floyd. Pyomp, pyomp, flip, lift off. Oof, that screw was loose. We gotta go through and uh, snug some of these up if they can be. Might have to jam some toothpicks in there if you know what I mean, ha ha. Oh, oh boy, this guy's tight. Okay, well, you don't need a lot of room. Just gotta get this wire through there. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, just jam up. It's being a little bit of a nuisance. Just need this red wire to peep out like this. There we go. Now we should be able to get that EMG fitted into place. And I don't remember where I got these from, but there's just like these rubber, they look like slingshot tubing. That's what I'm using to keep the pickup elevated. Put those over the holes. Nice. Oh yeah, it feels like it's gonna sit there nice. Nice. All right. Oh, it's got this JB bolted back down. Oh, that one's spinning free. That one torqued all right. That one torqued decent. Oh, that one's spinning free. Okay, well, if you don't know this trick already, we take a toots pick, shove it in there, break it off. And now we have some torque again. It's quick and dirty. Like ideally, you want to take the pick up out. You want to like stick it in there, find out depth, cut it to length, glue it in there. I just shove it in, pull it back a scotch, snap her off and driving her home. Just getting her done, bud. Just getting her done. This is my guitar. Like if I was fixing someone else's guitar, I'd handle the situation di differently, I'd assure you. I honestly can't remember where I got this puller tool, but it's handy. Let's see, did it hold tune? Pretty close, yeah. All right, so wiring in the muffin's uncle. So we gotta figure out our routing. Wanna do it so it doesn't interfere with the battery. We're gonna need to pull ground for this guy here. We're actually gonna need two ground points and then it's gonna connect to this terminal here. Right, so how this is, we got neck, center, Output goes to the controls, controls returns here, which are the next center positions on the three-way on the other side, and then that one's bridge only, and then output. Bridge only has a 470K resistor. That's very important, especially with Seymour Duncans. Seymour Duncans don't like to be run raw dog. They need the impedance that the pot would give them in order to sound properly. Coils have induction, induction has a frequency response, and the induction is directly proportional to the impedance load on them. I suppose Seymour Duncan designed that with this in mind, but they just, they don't sound right without the pot or a preload. Now we're gonna be doing that same thing for the EMG. The EMG needs a 25K pot, but currently these are 500K pots. Now in theory, if I put a resistor across that pickup, it can simulate having a uh, lower value pot on it. And I've done some maths, because there are maths you can do matching up uneven resistors. If I use a 27K, adding that to the 500K should virtually hit our target, 25K. Now the question is, finding a spot on this already congested potentiometer to make two additional ground connections without losing our ability to cram a battery in there. I wish I had a negative bus bar. That means we gotta keep the connections low. How's this hole look down here? I might be able to use that hole right on the pot. Oh yeah, there we go. One problem solved. Now where are we gonna put the resistor? 
Will the resistor also go through that hole? Would you believe this is a one watt resistor, but it's so freaking tiny? Oh, ah, yeah, there we go. We have our ground connection. Ah! It all just popped out. You think you got it. You think you know somebody? It just doesn't want to stay in place for us. Okay, so Kai Kai, you gotta make it so that that wire doesn't pop out this time. And just jam that screwdriver to put some pressure on it. So hopefully, there we go. I'll free up this terminal. Still looks like hell, but get all your crap off there. This resistor, bring that around. That should be good. It's not too important if the other side touches the bottom of the enclosure, because that's um, like conductive paint. And well, that side's already connected to ground, but we want to make sure this side doesn't touch anything. Oh, I'm gonna look at my stripper in there. Oh yeah, chowder house, bud. These strippers work so well to do this manual doors. Oh boy, I forgot how tough the insulation on EMGs is. It's like some heavy duty nylon or something. The wire is so nice and silvery. All right, get that wire up through there. And then we have to wrap it around nice. What you don't do is just jam the wire through the hole and then solder it into place. You can maybe get away with that with EMGs because they're an active signal. But if you want a good clear tone, you need to clean up your terminals, you need to clean up your wires, and you need to actually get the wire, wrap it around, physical contact with the terminal, and then solder it down. Trust me, I've, I've tried this. I used to do pickup swaps all the time, just jam the wire through, kind of wet the solder, jam the wire through, and be like, oh, that doesn't quite sound right. But then one day I'm like, hey, what happens if I carefully, lovingly twist the wire around the terminal and then solder it? Oh boy, it sounds better. There's some aspects of electrical voodoo that I don't buy into, like polyester versus polypropylene capacitors and metal film versus carbon film resistors. But a good connection is a good connection, and it's easy to make a bad connection doing sloppy work in a guitar. And whereas you can get away with bad connections in other walks of life, uh, the guitar isn't as forgiving because the signals are so low. All right, so the battery negative is gonna go on to here. That connection doesn't have to be as good. It just has to pass a little bit of voltage. And then we just have to attach these guys together. Good enough. It's gonna toss a touch of shrink on there. All right, now we have to pack this all up. This isn't the cleanest work in the world, but that's because my guitars are constant science experiments. So can I just jam this in there now with the battery clip in place? Oof, it's tight. Pushing on one of the terminals on the switch. And then are the curves gonna fit that battery? Let's try this the other way around. That's a little bit better because the battery clip does clear the barrel here. Let's go find the back plate. Man, I haven't had the back plate on this thing in like 15 years. I've literally just been running with its guts hanging out. Oh, it's gonna go together. Uh, I got, oh boy, is this still good? Like I like to um, you know, do one of these sometimes. Uh, if I'm gonna do this, I should get a fresh battery, shouldn't I? Like this one's good, but her <laughs> Panasonic carbon zinc should do the job. If it was a gigging guitar, I'd put a lithium in there. Pretty sure this is the non-conductive foam. Oh, it fits so great. This foam's just coming apart. Just wanna give a little bit of isolation here, bud. Okay, now where's the screws for this? Okay, so somewhere I think I have like a bag of guitar screws for all my guitars. In the meantime, I'm just gonna put some of these generic uh, Fender pick guard type screws in here. I found four of them. All right, wow, this is so half-assed. I seem like such a professional, but I, I do believe we can test on it now. Amps warmed up already, let's plug her in and see if that pickup is gonna do what it needs to do. I swear I haven't tuned it. Oh, that's pretty close, bud. All right, so back to the neck. And center, EMG's working. So how does it respond to the potentiometer with that 27K mod? Perfect! Exactly what I needed. Now I can use this as like some fuzz pedals and stuff. In fact, the reason why I have this is so I can play it clean. Let's switch the channel over here. So 
See, that's much nicer than this. I don't like straight neck tone for clean. Definitely don't like bridge tone. But now I can switch to the center and... respond to the tone. the neck position in this guitar is great if you want to do something bluesy. Just maybe not with this amp. I'm using my Crate Blue Voodoo combo right now. So there you have it. If you want to mix EMGs and passive pickups together in a guitar that already has passive pickups and it has potentiometers for the passive pickups and you don't want to change out those potentiometers because you're just changing the one pickup in an oddball configuration like this. Or maybe you just want to throw a neck pickup in there real quick. 27K plus 500K is about 25K. So you just put a 27K resistor across the output of that pickup and it'll match. You just have to watch out for certain uh, switching schemes. It's it's convenient in this guitar because this pickup operates alone. It doesn't get combined with any of the other pickups. So that worked out. If you had a situation where there were intermediate positions that kind of mixed the two pickups together, well, that 27K impedance is gonna completely derp out your passive pickup. But hey, bam, I finally got a middle pickup in this guy. So she, he, it, they is about where I need it to be. And I can continue enjoying playing on this because this guitar is a really good player. And I'm thinking of trying different uh, different other pickups in here actually different different flavor in the bridge So we'll see we'll see stay tuned if you like this for more For more So boy, but you're just giving her